By current estimates, 17% of adults in the Republic of South Africa has HIV AIDS. In Botswana, 25% of the population supposedly has HIV infection. These numbers are entirely implausible. They exceed all feasible limits of human sexual activity. Now, to put things in proper perspective, we need to examine the sexual behavior of gay males in New York City at the beginning of the HIV AIDS epidemic. At the beginning of the AIDS epidemic, the gay men in New York City averaged approximately 20 different sexual partners every six months. Or by another count, they averaged approximately 1,000 sexual partners over their lifetime. Now, in truth, these numbers represent only the gay males who were highly sexually active. Now, not all gay males are highly sexually active. But at the other end of the extreme, the Centers for Disease Control tracked one gay male who claimed 750 different sexual partners over a three-year period. This level of sexual activity among gay males in limited geographical areas gave rise to the geometric growth in the number of AIDS cases in, in the United States at the beginning of the HIV AIDS epidemic. Geometric in this instance means doubling in number every six months. Now the risk of HIV transmission during unprotected anal intercourse is thought to be 0.005 to 0.02 per episode. The estimated risk for HIV transmission during unprotected vaginal intercourse is estimated to be 0.001. What this all means is the risk of HIV transmission during unprotected anal intercourse is approximately 5 to 20 times greater than the risk of HIV transmission during unprotected vaginal intercourse. Unprotected means without a condom. And all these numbers I'm citing are the risk for the receptive partner. The HIV AIDS epidemic in Africa is said to be heterosexual. So for the heterosexual African men to match the same transmission rates for HIV as the gay men in New York City, that means the average heterosexual African man would require approximately 100 to 400 different sexual partners every six months. Now, unlike the AIDS epidemic in Europe and the United States, in which males predominate the AIDS cases. In Africa, supposedly, the number of men infected with HIV is equal to the number of women infected with HIV. So the African heterosexual women would be required to be extraordinarily busy to infect an equal number of men, since the transmission rate female to male is 1.1 to 3.3 times less efficient than HIV transmission from male to female. So the females would require to have approximately 110 to 1,200 different sexual partners every six months in order to accomplish this rate of HIV transmission. Now, all this extraordinary sexual activity among the heterosexual males and females of Africa would only give them an HIV transmission rate equal or comparable to that found among gay males in New York City. But in New York City, the current prevalence of HIV is approximately 0.4%, or four-tenths of 1%, whereas in South Africa, the current estimate for HIV prevalence is 17% of all adults, and in Botswana, 25%. 
Therefore, in order to achieve this astronomical rate of HIV infection among the general population, the heterosexual African men of South Africa would require approximately 4,200 to 17,000 sexual partners every six months, while females would require approximately 4,700 to 51,000 sexual partners every six months. These astronomical numbers are based on the concept that New York City and South Africa have similar sized populations of highly sexually active individuals. But we must account for the fact that there are far greater numbers of heterosexuals than homosexuals. The difference in HIV prevalence in New York City, which is four-tenths of one percent, and South Africa, which is supposedly 17 percent, is a multiple of 42 meaning that for every gay male New Yorker having 20 different sexual partners every six months, there must be 42 South African heterosexuals having comparable sexual activity in terms of HIV transmission rates. So, for every gay male New Yorker having 20 different sexual partners every six months, there must be 42 South African heterosexual males having 100 to 400 different sexual partners every six months, or 42 heterosexual females having 110 to 1,200 different sexual partners every six months, or a combination of the two. Although these numbers are absurd to the extreme, I want to caution my viewers against thinking they have witnessed a valid quantitative statistical analysis. Rather, this presentation should be considered qualitative in nature. The difference? Well, most of you are familiar with quantitative scoring in school. Perhaps you got a 97 in the last test, or an 85 as a final grade. This is a method of quantitative scoring. The method of qualitative scoring would be A, B, C, or D. They give general grades, or perhaps, qualitatively, you have a pass-fail score. With sufficient quality, you pass the course. If your quality of your work was insufficient, you failed the course. And this is the way to view this presentation. After viewing this material, do you believe the concept of an HIV AIDS epidemic among African heterosexual males and females that achieves a 25% prevalence rate among the population? Do you believe this concept passes, or do you believe this, this concept fails? Obviously, this presentation raises many issues, not the least of which is the conclusion that the HIV antibody tests are simply invalid among tropical indigent populations. One of the major fallacies is that poverty is related to HIV AIDS in Africa. Far more likely is that the conditions secondary to poverty in Africa give rise to an extraordinary number of false positive outcomes on the HIV antibody test. But that's a story for another time. If you'd like to learn more, please refer to my books, HIV AIDS, The Facts and the Fiction, and HIV AIDS in South Africa, The Facts and the Fiction. Also available, now issued as an ebook, is my famous book, Understanding and Preventing AIDS, a book for everyone.